Let's start with the simplest example of 1D projectile motion, an object dropped from rest. A ball is dropped from rest from a height of 30.6 meters. How long does it take the ball to hit the ground? And what is the ball's speed when it hits the ground? First, let's pick out the important information. The ball is dropped from a height of 30.6 meters. The ball is dropped from rest, which means the initial velocity is zero. We want to find the time and the final speed, or the magnitude of the final velocity, when the ball hits the ground. Next, we always need to choose which directions are positive and negative. We could say up is the positive y direction, or down is the positive y direction. If up is positive, the initial y position would be 30.6 meters, and the final y position at the ground would be 0 meters. If down is positive, then the initial y position is 0 meters, and the final y position is 30.6 meters. Since this is projectile motion, the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. If up is positive, then the acceleration, ay, is negative. The ball would accelerate in the negative direction and the y value would decrease over time. If down is positive, the acceleration would be positive. The ball would accelerate in the positive direction and the y value would increase over time. You can set up your axis either way. Just make sure you stay consistent with your directions and the positive and negative signs. In this course, we're usually going to say up is the positive y direction. When we study projectile motion, we're usually describing the motion of a point at the center of the object, technically the center of mass. When we draw a picture, the object has some width and height, but we're going to describe the position of the center of the ball. So the ball hits the ground when its center has a y position of zero. Also, when a question wants us to find a value when the object hits the ground, it's asking about the instant it hits the ground, or we can think of it as the instant before it hits the ground. If we're trying to find the speed at that point, we're not going to say the ball stops when it hits the ground and the final speed is zero. The question is focusing on the projectile motion of the ball. So we're looking for the time and speed when the ball has the same y position as the ground, which in this case is zero meters. So don't think about the physical interaction with the ground, just focus on the projectile motion of the ball. All right, so first, how long does it take the ball to hit the ground? The ball starts with zero velocity, then it accelerates downwards, and we want to find the time when the y position is zero. Which equation can we use for that? The first equation for displacement doesn't involve time. The second equation only applies if there's no acceleration and the velocity is constant, or it can tell us the average velocity. We're not really going to use this equation in the y direction. The third equation for acceleration does apply, but we would need to know the final velocity to find the time. The fourth equation relates the initial and final y positions, the initial velocity, time, and the acceleration. We can use this equation because it has the variable we're trying to find, t, and we have values that we can plug in for everything else. The fifth equation relates the initial and final velocities, the acceleration, and the initial and final positions, but it doesn't include time. So let's use this equation. We plug in 0 meters for the final position when the ball hits the ground, 30.6 meters for the initial position, 0 meters per second for the initial velocity, and negative 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration. If we simplify that and we drop the units, we end up with this. We can add 4.9 t squared to both sides, divide both sides by 4.9, and then take the square root of both sides to find t, which is 2.5 seconds. So after the ball is released, 
It takes 2.5 seconds to reach the ground. Next, what is the ball's speed when it hits the ground? Which equation can we use for this part? Now we have a value for the time it hits the ground. So we could use this equation and plug in the time, or we could use this equation and plug in the final position. Let's use this one first. Remember, this equation can also be written like this if we replace delta vy with vy final minus vy initial, and we rearrange the equation. Also, this uses delta t, but that's the same as just t, since the initial time point is 0 seconds. So we plug in 0 meters per second for the initial velocity, negative 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration, and 2.5 seconds for time. That gives us negative 24.5 meters per second for the final velocity. Speed is the magnitude, or the absolute value, of the velocity. So the final speed of the ball would be positive 24.5 meters per second. Now let's try using the other equation. We plug in 0 meters per second for the initial velocity, negative 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration, 0 meters for the final position, and 30.6 meters for the initial position. We can simplify that, take the square root of both sides, and we get 24.5 meters per second for the final speed of the ball. If you want, you can keep the values and take the square root of that, so you don't have to round anything in the middle of the calculation. Notice how this equation will always give us a positive value for v, because it's squared in the equation. So it's going to give us speed, the absolute value of velocity. Alright, so those are the answers to this question. If any object is dropped from a height of 30.6 meters with no initial velocity, it will always take 2.5 seconds to hit the ground, with a speed of 24.5 meters per second. Questions like this are common, where we have to find some values at one point in the motion, usually when the object hits the ground. Now, to get a better idea of how this motion works, let's explore one-dimensional projectile motion using this scenario. So a ball is dropped from rest with no initial velocity from a height of 30.6 meters. We're using a ball in this example but everything we're going to see applies to any object. Since we're ignoring air resistance, all objects accelerate downwards at the same rate, so they all follow the same motion. What's happening to the y position of the ball over time? It starts at 30.6 meters and decreases as the ball falls. What's happening to the velocity? The ball starts with no velocity, and then it moves faster as it falls. Let's start by exploring the position over time. Here's a snapshot of the ball every half second. If we look at the spacing between each snapshot, the ball falls a greater distance during each interval of time. Why is that? The ball is in projectile motion, or free fall, so it's accelerating downwards because of gravity. It doesn't move very far in the beginning because the velocity starts at zero. As the ball speeds up, it moves a greater distance during each second, or each half second. Let's find the y position of the ball at each time. What equation can we use to do that? The displacement equation doesn't include time. The acceleration equation doesn't include the y position. This equation would work because it has the variable we're trying to find, and we know everything else. And this equation doesn't include time. So let's use this equation. As a side note, the subscripts f and i mean the final and initial positions. But you might see this equation written like this, where the initial position has the subscript 0, which means the position at time zero, and the final position doesn't have a subscript. 
These equations mean the same thing. We can plug in a value for time and get the y position. Usually, we're focused on two points in the motion, so we call the first one initial and the second one final. Final doesn't have to mean when the ball hits the ground, it's just the second point that we're focusing on. So when we find the y position at each time, you can think of each one as the final y position in the equation, but we're just going to label them as y. So what's the y position when t equals 0.5 seconds? We plug in 30.6 meters for the initial y position, 0 meters per second for the initial velocity, 0 0.5 seconds for the time, and negative 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration. That gives us 29.4 meters for the y position at 0 0.5 seconds. At 1 second, we plug in 1 second for t and the same values for everything else, and we get 25.7 meters for the y position at 1 second. At 1.5 seconds, the y position is 19.6 meters. At 2 seconds, it's 11 meters. And at 2.5 seconds, the y position is 0 meters, which happens to be the time when the ball hits the ground. Notice how the equation is giving us smaller values for y as time increases. The right side of the equation starts with 30.6 meters, the initial velocity is 0, and the acceleration is negative, so we're subtracting from the 30.6 meters as time increases. So now that we have these values, let's graph the y position versus time. The horizontal axis is time in seconds, which increases from left to right. The vertical axis is the y position in meters, and up is positive, so it happens to look like the physical y axis over on the left. The first point on the graph would be when t is 0 seconds and y is 30.6 meters. The next point is when t is 0 0.5 seconds and y is 29.4 meters. Here's all the points we found. If we calculated the y position at smaller time intervals, we could plot more points. And if we watch the y position as the ball falls, here's what the graph looks like. First, keep in mind that this is a graph of one-dimensional motion. It's not showing us a two-dimensional path. The ball only moves down, it's not moving to the right. Next, if you're familiar with functions, this is a graph of this function, which is the kinematic equation we just used to find the y position. This notation means y as a function of t, or position as a function of time. Next. Note that the curve, which is the term for the line that we graphed, is actually a curve. The position versus time graph is a curved line if the object is accelerating. Next, notice that the curve crosses the horizontal axis at 2.5 seconds, when the y position is 0 and the ball hits the ground. But the graph also extends beyond that point. This kinematic equation will give us negative y values after that time. If we plug in 3 seconds for t, the y position is negative 13.5 meters. In the real physical scenario, the ball stops when y equals 0. But if the ground wasn't there, the motion would continue and the ball would have negative y positions based on the axis we set up. So this is a reminder that when using kinematic equations, always check that the values you get actually make sense in the physical scenario that you're using them for. Finally, notice that the curve starts at the initial y position, 30.6 meters. If we changed the initial height that we dropped the ball, the entire curve would shift up and down without changing shape and the x-intercept would move left and right. For example, if the ball was dropped from a lower height, the ball would hit the ground in less time. So that's what the ball's y position looks like during this motion. But what's happening with the velocity?
Which equation can we use to find the velocity at each time point? Remember, this equation is for the average velocity, and it doesn't tell us the velocity at some time if there's acceleration. We could use the equation for acceleration by plugging in the initial velocity, the acceleration, and each time. We can't use this equation to find the final velocity. And now that we have y values at each time, we could use this equation. However, we'd be plugging in values for y that we calculated and rounded. So let's use this equation and plug in the exact time values. At 0.5 seconds, we plug in 0 meters per second for the initial velocity, negative 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration, and 0.5 seconds for the time. That gives us negative 4.9 meters per second for the velocity at 0.5 seconds. At 1 second, the velocity is negative 9.8. At 1.5 seconds, it's negative 14.7. At 2 seconds, it's negative 19.6. And at 2.5 seconds, it's negative 24.5. So that's the velocity of the ball at each time point. Here's what the ball's velocity vector would look like from 0 to 2 seconds. The velocities are negative because they point in the negative y direction. Notice how the magnitude of the velocity and the length of the vector increases as the ball falls. At 1 second, the velocity is negative 9.8, and at 2 seconds, it's twice that, negative 19.6. This is basically the definition of acceleration. The ball is accelerating at negative 9.8 meters per second squared, so the velocity changes by negative 9.8 meters per second every second. If we line up the velocity vectors at each second, we can see how they change over time. That change between each second is the acceleration. The velocity vector increases in magnitude, or length, by 9.8 meters per second every second. Next, what would the velocity graph look like? The horizontal axis is always time, and now the vertical axis is the y velocity in meters per second, with positive values going up and negative values going down. So the vertical axis is not the height, it's the velocity. Let's plot the values that we found. The velocities are negative, so they're below the horizontal axis. If we graph the full curve as the ball falls, it looks like this. This time, the graph is a straight line. The velocity starts at zero, and it has a negative slope. This is a graph of the kinematic equation we used to find the velocities, which is written here as velocity as a function of time. The y-intercept is zero, which is the initial velocity, and the slope of the velocity graph is the acceleration, the change in velocity over the change in time. After each second, the velocity decreases by 9.8 meters per second, or we could say it increases in the negative direction. And the velocity would keep increasing in the negative direction if the ground wasn't there to stop the motion. Finally, what would the acceleration graph look like? The horizontal axis is time, and the vertical axis is acceleration in meters per second squared. In this course, we're only going to deal with motion where the acceleration is constant. In projectile motion, the acceleration versus time graph looks like this. It's a constant negative 9.8 meters per second squared the entire time. It's negative because we chose up to be positive. Written out like this, acceleration as a function of time is just a constant value. The variable t doesn't appear on the right because acceleration does not depend on time. It's always the same value. Now let's look at the position, velocity, and acceleration graphs together. Keep in mind that the vertical axes represent different things and use different units. 
The Y position starts at 30.6 meters and decreases over time as the ball falls. The ball hits the ground when Y equals zero. The velocity starts at zero meters per second because the ball is dropped from rest and the velocity increases in the negative direction over time because it's speeding up in the negative y direction. And the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared the whole time. The slope of the velocity graph is the acceleration, the change in velocity over the change in time. The acceleration is constant, so the slope of the velocity graph is constant, which is why it's a straight line. The slope of the position graph is the velocity, the change in position over the change in time. The slope of the curve, or the slope of the line tangent to the curve, is the velocity at that time. At t equals zero seconds, the slope of the position graph is zero, and the initial velocity is zero meters per second. The slope at two seconds is negative 19.6 which is the velocity at two seconds. The velocity changes over time, so the slope of the position graph changes over time, which is why it's a curve. So that's what 1D projectile motion looks like given these initial conditions, where an object is dropped from rest at some initial height. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.